All right, guys, we're all finished up here. Got my timing belt pulleys on. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Today, Alan and I, well, Alan went inside the gas station real quick, but we're heading up to the junkyard today to get a rod for the engine. Um, I got all of my parts in as you guys saw uh, for the engine so hopefully we'll be assembling the block tonight But uh, we'll see how far we get at the junkyard today. We only got a couple hours till they close So we're trying to rush to get up there. All right guys. I just got home here um, It took a lot longer than I was expecting to at the junkyard, but I got a new rod I already put it in my piston. That is the piston that came uh, with this rod. So that one's just junk I'll get rid of it um, got a new rod everything is good to go so tomorrow Alex is gonna come down and we're gonna start assembling that block so um, yeah, early in the morning tomorrow, we're going to go over to my parents' house and start on that. But I did get the, the rod, and it is in the piss, and everything worked out great. So, yeah, we'll see you guys in the morning. What is up, guys? Today is the day. I'll hopefully be getting my block all assembled. So, uh, I got all my parts and tools over here uh, ready to go. Assembly lube, all my parts, hone, everything I need, hopefully. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, main caps off now so I can end up honing out these cylinders. I can get them all good to go and then we can start uh, checking ring gaps and ring clearances, um, filing out the rings to make the gaps a little bigger for the nitrous and then hopefully we'll start putting it all together. So yeah. All right. So I got the uh, end caps out of there, the main caps, I'm sorry. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and start honing. Uh, before you hone each cylinder, you want to spray some WD-40 down in there to help the hone kind of go around without scratching too much. Uh, so I'm going to spray some WD-40 down in this first cylinder. I'll grab the hone, put it on my drill, and uh, we'll start with cylinder number one here. So, yeah, I'll grab the, dr the drill now, hook the hone up, and uh, we'll get started. All right, so let's go ahead and spray this WD-40 around here a little bit. Don't need a lot, just enough. Okay, we're going to start with cylinder number And when you go in and out, you want to go relatively fast. Obviously, you don't want to go too far down. You don't want to go too far up. But you want to go relatively fast going up and down. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot. So, just like this. Go ahead and spray some brake clean down in there. Uh, try to clean it up a little bit before I take a rag and wipe it out. But you want to see some good cross-hatching score marks on the inside of the cylinder wall. Now you can kind of see all those good cross-hatch marks on this side versus on this side for honing. So it's definitely cleaning up quite a bit. So we'll move on to the other side and uh, get it all done. All right, guys, we're out here. What's up? Alex and Alan. Out here working on the block now, so hopefully we'll be getting this thing assembled today. Just kind of cleaning everything up. We're going to uh, check all the clearances and everything, and then uh, we'll get her all put together. Ready to lube up all the bearings. Get that all open. nice and shiny. <laughs> Greg's all cleaned up, looking good. We just got the crank in there. Everything is all torqued down to spec. So continue putting this block together, and then we can Maybe get the rods, pistons in. <laughs> yeah, ones these are. ones were 54 foot pounds. We did what 56, yep. I think. Six. And then these, the side bolts on the four bolt mains were uh, 36 foot pounds. So yeah, everything spins freely like like yep. new now. I didn't do that when we got it. <laughs> so yep, right. moving on. Right, so we got the oil pump and everything on the block. It's about ready to drop some pistons into. We're just Cleaning getting them up. the pistons all clean and shiny. So, yeah, next we'll be gapping the piston rings and getting them in the block. 
All right, so they're all cleaned up, looking brand new. So, unfortunately, we're out of time for today. So we're gonna, I got a birthday party to go to, but uh, yeah, the blocks for the most part together. Just gotta throw the pistons and rods in it and send it. So, so yeah, next time we come back over here, we'll get those pistons in and uh, finish up that, and then we can start working on the heads. What is up guys? It's now the following weekend. Uh, it's been about a week since we were over here last. Uh, back over here with the engine. Today we're going to be filing our piston rings, getting them on the pistons, and hopefully getting the pistons into the engine. So uh, my buddy Cody, Cody Knobs, big shout out to you buddy. Uh, let me borrow his uh, piston ring filer. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that, file all the pistons. I'm gonna open up all the gaps, uh, about three thousandths of an inch. That spec was given to me by the gentleman that runs Hafferland Performance. Uh, so big shout out to Hafferland Performance for uh, the tips, all the advice he's given me last week. Uh, he's been a huge help with this whole this whole uh, process. So big shout out to Hafferland Performance. They're also um, doing a lot of J-series stuff. He just released a set of J-series valve springs uh, that you can use stock retainers for. So. I might be going through him to get the valve springs. I'm not really sure yet. I haven't really decided um, because I've had so many problems with the retainers that I might just end up going with the spring retainer set. So I haven't decided on that yet. But uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's go ahead and start uh, filing these piston rings and we'll see what they look like. All right, guys. So here's our first uh, new piston ring here. Um, the, this is one of the top rings. So the tolerance for these, uh, I believe, are 8 to 14 thousandths of an inch on the ring gap. So I'm going to go ahead and slide it into the piston now, center it up a little bit, and then uh, we'll measure the ring grab to see what they're at new uh, when they came in. And then we can use the file to open it up. And like I said, I'm going to open them up three thousandths of an inch from the spec, uh, the factory spec for the nitrous. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get it in the engine now, uh, measure it out, see what it looks like, and then we'll file it from there. All right, so I just uh, used my feeler gauges on that ring there. Um, and it came out at, I don't know if, I can, if you can even see that or not, but it was a uh, uh, 17 thousandths of an inch. So like I said, the max um, factory spec is 14 thousandths of an inch. So that's already 3 thousandths of an inch bigger than the factory spec. So that's about where I want it to be anyways. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just put that one on the piston. Um, I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to check the second ring. The second ring, uh, I'd have to look at what the tolerance is. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll go ahead and slide that in the engine now. So second ring going in. Like that. All right. Get the piston squared up a little bit. Right there. So the ring gap that we're measuring is actually, you can see that, the little gap right there in the rings. Um, so this one looks quite a bit smaller than the last one was. So I got my feeler gauge, feel what that gap is, and then check that against the factory tolerance. And then I want to add three thousandths of an inch. So if it's too small, then I can go ahead and take it over to the ring file here, file it out. Uh, but yeah, so I'll go ahead and check that one and see what it looks like. All right, so the second ring gap uh, came out at 18 thousandths. The max factory tolerance is 22 thousandths. So it's gonna have to be filed out a little bit. Um, I don't know if I wanna take it all the way to 25 thousandths, which would be adding 3 thousandths to the max tolerance. Uh, I might take it out to 23 thousandths maybe, 24 at most. I don't wanna go all the way out to 25. That seems like a little excessive. So um, yeah, I'll go ahead and set it over here on the file now, like so and then uh, get to working on it. So basically what you want to do is you want to hold the ring back against that wheel there and you only want to file one side of the ring and you want to, have to make you want to make sure you're holding it flat against the actual wheel itself but don't apply too much pressure. And then we'll just file a little bit, recheck, file, recheck, and repeat the process till we get to where we want to be. Um, the top rings are going to be made out of a harder material than the, the uh, second ring. So the top rings are going to take a bit longer to file, but luckily I didn't have to file that top one at all, just the second one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get to that. Like I said, I'll probably open it up to 23 thousandths, maybe 24 thousandths, uh, and then we'll put it back in and go from there. You can't really see it, but I got my 24 thousandths uh, feeler gauge here. So as you see, it slides right into the gap 
real nice and easy. So I'm going to say we're set on that one. So we'll go ahead and put that ring on the piston and then we'll just double check the oil uh, rings. Usually they're come preset perfectly. So just gonna double check them, put it on the piston and we'll slide that piston down into it. All right, so I got all the rings on my first piston here. So I'm gonna get the piston compressor tool or the ring compressor tool out and uh, drop this piston on in the cylinder because I don't want to mix up what pistons go where because I gapped the rings for this cylinder here. So if I put them in here, it could be slightly different. So get my piston compressor tool out, drop it into the cylinder, and then we'll move on to the next one. Got my bearing in there. Getting ready to uh, just put a little bit of oil on the inside of the cylinder before I drop the actual piston in there just to kind of lubricate a little bit. Make it a little bit easier on myself. So I'm going to lubricate that with a little bit of oil, uh, wrap my piston in my piston compressor, and then just go ahead and drop her on in. All right, got the first piston in. The engine turns over, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. Um, and then we'll just go back and forth and get all of them in. All right, guys. So I don't know, four hours later or so, finally got all the pistons back in their homes, as you can see. So pretty tight the crank's pretty tight to uh, turn over but i think that's just because it needs oil the cylinders are pretty dry i wiped them down with the oil before i put the pistons in there but they feel dry now like the piston scraped all the oil out so i'll probably come back over here tomorrow hopefully and uh flip it on over and get the oil pan and everything on it put some oil in it maybe and try to work it around uh by hand and see if i can get some oil dispersed up into the pistons but yeah for now all the pistons are in guys and uh slowly coming along the only thing i need now to order is my valve train and then i can put the heads together put the heads on it and then it's ready to rip so yeah we're getting there guys so uh we will see you tomorrow all right guys it's now the next day it is freezing cold out here but i'm back over here at my parents house uh yesterday i got all the rods and pistons put in here um today i'm going to be putting some I'm going to just put some oil. I know this is cheap, crappy oil. I know I'm going to hear a bunch of crap about it in the comments, but that's okay. It won't be staying in there. Uh, I'm just going to put some of this in the bottom of the pistons. That way the rings can start filling up with the oil. And I'm going to put a little bit on top as well, just to keep the rust out of there. Because it's pretty hard to crank over right now. I think that's because the cylinder walls are relatively dry. I, put, I wiped them down with oil before I put the pistons in, but obviously I didn't put enough in there or something because it's pretty t pretty tough turning over so uh, I'm hoping and putting some oil in there on the bottom of the pistons will help fill up the rings a little bit and make it slide a little easier that way when I go to put it in time later it's going to be a bit easier to do that um so yeah I'm going to dump some oil in there and then I'm going to put my baffle on my uh oil pan on water pump on and basically just button up the breast of the bottom of this engine um and then after that the only thing I have left I'll start pulling my heads apart get the valve springs get the uh, valves and everything out of there and then uh whenever i get whenever i can i'll go ahead and order my uh valve train springs and retainers and then uh get the heads together and then i should be able to throw it in the car so yeah for today we're gonna go ahead and start dumping some oil in and start getting this thing all together i'm just gonna dump a little oil on the bottom of each cylinder won't need much just a little bit should do the trick just fine. Probably won't even end up using the whole court for the whole thing. So, all right, that's done. I'm gonna put the lid back on that because I will spill it everywhere. And I'll go ahead and put the oil baffle on. Um, if you guys remember, my the one that I took out of here had a big hole in it right here from when that rod broke. Um, so this oil baffle came out of a Acura MDX, I believe. We pulled it out of at the junkyard, um, and it lines up just fine. So throw that guy on there, throw the oil strainer on there, and then uh, the oil pan. So then we'll be able to flip it over, put a little oil on the top of the cylinders, put my water pump on, and then uh, my oil filter bracket on. And I think that's all I have left for the bottom end of this engine. And then I can start working on the head. So yeah, get this bolted down and uh, we'll go move from there. All right, got that whole bottom end together. Everything's torqued down to spec. Um, all the oil pan bolts were, I believe, 104 inch pounds. Um, so got the rear main seal on, everything's good to go there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the bolt out of my engine stand and I'm gonna kind of rock the engine back and forth just a little bit. Let all that oil in this in the pistons get all over the bottom of the pistons, get good down into the um, piston rings and everything. So I'm just gonna rock it back and forth a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and flip it on over. 
I'm gonna finish up the water pump. I got a new gasket for the water pump because the water pump's new, um, but the gasket stretched out so it no longer fits in there. So I got a new water pump gasket here, my head studs, and yeah, once I put the water pump gasket on, I can put my um, timing belt pulleys back on. And then, uh, yeah, so everything's kind of coming along here, guys. Um, so, yeah, we'll move on. I'm going to put a little bit of oil down in the cylinders, rub it around the walls, and put some on top of the pistons just to keep everything from rusting. Um, and putting on top of the cylinder, or putting around the cylinders and everything to help lubricate, because like I said, it's pretty hard to turn over now. It'll turn, but it's pretty tough. Um, so, yeah, once we get some oil flowing through there, I think it's going to get easier. After I put the oil on the bottom of the pistons, it's already gotten a lot easier. So, yeah, I'm going to let it sit in there, and then I'll put the water pump on. I got... Uh, the oil filter and the adapter on there So I think the only thing I have left is the water pump that we can do the uh, timing pulleys and things like that and be on our way here, so She's coming along guys. She is coming along. So I just wanted to show you guys I didn't put a whole lot of oil in there Just enough to cover the whole piston with and around the walls. There's a little bit of pooling in there going on. That's okay um, obviously it's gonna smoke like a freight train when I first started up, but that will be okay as long as I'm expecting it. So yeah, a little, little bit of oil in all of them and moving on to the water pump. All right guys, we're all finished up here. Got my timing belt pulleys on. I put my tensioner on here still. It's in the box down here, um, but I'm not gonna put that on obviously until I put the timing belt on. Um, but uh, yeah, so everything's on the front, water pump's on, pistons are in, covered in oil, water pipe's on. So, yeah, now we're just waiting on the heads. So, like I said, hopefully sometime this week or maybe next weekend or whatever, I'll start pulling the heads apart, get the valve springs and stuff off, get ready to order the uh, valve train. Once I get that in, I'll put it in the heads, and then it'll all come together. I do have to run over to the hatch at some point and get the knock sensor because I accidentally broke this one trying to get it off of the other engine or the other block that had the hole in it. So that is broke, so i got to pull that off the hatch. But other than that, we should be good to go, guys. So coming along hopefully in the next few weeks we'll have her ready to drop in the car so yeah anyways guys that should be it for this video um like i said the next one will consist of pulling the heads apart so thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time